All right, so in the previous video, we examined the external anatomy of the crawfish. Now we're going to be looking at the internal anatomy. Uh, be sure to be looking on page uh, 90 for a diagram of the, um, uh, the arrangement and location of the different internal structures that we're looking for, and on page 92 for a uh, table that you can use to follow along. All right. Now, first thing we're going to do to access the internal anatomy is we're going to make um, a series of cuts so that we can open up the top of the cephalothorax. All right. So starting at the side, you get yourself just underneath the cephalothorax, and then lined up with the eye, you cut right to the eye line. Now, you want to make sure that you hug the scissors just underneath uh, the exoskeleton so you don't damage the internal organs. Okay, so we cut up to the eye. We're going to repeat this process on the other side. Okay. Be sure to do this at your next family's crawfish boil. All right. Now, once we have our two cuts along the cephalothorax meeting up at the eye, we're going to join that by cutting across so that we can now peel this back very carefully. It's important to work slowly. Take your time. Okay. Now, once we have that final cut made, we can't just go ripping this off willy-nilly uh, because we're going to take a bunch of organs with it. Instead, we want to use our scalpel to gently shave along the inside. And primarily, what we're really trying to get at here uh, is the, ex uh, the, um, uh, the mandibular muscle. We're trying to sever that so that we don't pull away a bunch of crawfish innards with it. Okay. So work carefully to sever that mandibular muscle so that we can pull this away nicely. Okay. Once you have that mandibular muscle um, severed, we should be able to peel this away nicely. Okay, so here we have the innards of our crawfish uh, pretty well exposed, okay? Now, uh, we can already see a, a couple of things pretty prominently, all right? These big purple lobes right here, okay, kind of all on either side just behind the eyeballs, these are the mandibular muscles, okay? The mandibular muscles are going to attach uh, to the mandible that we were looking at earlier. All right, that's their jaw muscles. That's what's going to allow them to, you know, move those mandibles to chew their food. All right, and when you're um, taking off that cephalothorax, you want to be very careful not to, uh, you know, kind of destroy that mandibular muscle too, too much. Okay. Now, next we come to the stomach. So this is pretty weird. This is the stomach right here. This um, bag-like structure that's similar in coloration to the mandibular muscles. Okay. Now, the stomach is, you know, unlike in human beings, for example, is located just behind the head, all right? So that's something you definitely want to be aware of. Now, if we kind of work carefully, we could sort of roll that stomach out, okay, and pull it out. And there we have the stomach. If we look inside of the stomach, we could see, uh, hopefully, some cool stuff. Um, so crawfish are detritivores, uh, meaning they eat uh, decaying organic matter primarily. All right. Uh, and if we open up the stomach, we should see, you know, what is basically a bunch of dirt. And indeed, that's what this crawfish's last meal was. Poor thing. All right. But another interesting structure that you could find inside of uh, the uh, crawfish's stomach is what's called the gastric mill, uh, colloquially referred to as tummy teeth. All right, tummy as in I have a tummy ache. So here we have 
the gastric mill, and that's you know kind of a descriptive uh, name for it. They are basically a set of jaws that are inside the stomach that help them further uh, mechanically break down you know this tough organic matter that they're trying to digest like right like rotting leaves and stuff like that okay so here if you look at it you can just see it right there okay there's one and here is another It kinda looks like a comb almost alright so that's the gastric mill and that's located inside of the stomach alright be sure to take note of that inside your lab manual Okay. Next, if we look inside the crawfish, uh, kind of behind the head here, we can see uh, some other important structures. So the first of those that we're going to talk about are these two paired lobes right here. Here's one, okay, that thing that I'm poking right now, and then the other is located just on the other side, reflected, okay? So these are what are called antennal glands. They're called antennal glands because they're located just behind the antenna. All right? But as far as I know, the antennal glands don't really function in any kind of capacity the way the antenna do. Instead, these are basically um, the crawfish's kidneys. Okay, these are osmoregulatory organs. All right? They're located just behind uh, the antenna inside the head. All right? Next, we can see uh, the very impressive crawfish brain. Uh, and here we have these two strands of nervous tissue. That is the crawfish brain, essentially. All right? They're not as smart as they look, and they don't look very smart to begin with. Okay, so that's the crawfish brain. All right. So we have the brain, we have the antennal glands, uh, and we have the stomach, and the mandibular muscles. Let's now move on to the rest of the crawfish. All right, so here what I like to do uh, is remove the remaining um, uh, plates of the cephalothorax. Very often it's helpful to remove the caliphates to make some room. Okay, so using your scissors, you can go ahead and cut off the rest of that plate there. And the first thing that we're going to see very prominently are these feathery protrusions, okay? These are, of course, the gills. Um, now, you'll see these in a lot of aquatic uh, arthropods, crustaceans, all right? Or all of them, really. They all need to breathe, and, of course, that's what the gills are used for, uh, drawing oxygen from the water column. Uh, you can also see these in blue crabs. Those of you that have been to a blue crab, or, you know, been to a crab boil, um, the so-called dead man's fingers. Those are their gills, and you see these in uh, crawfish as well, all right? These nice feathery projections. And again, these uh, feathery gill rachises are uh, typically associated with some kind of um, uh, segmented um, appendage, like a walking leg or a caliped or a, or a maxilla or, um, you know, what have you, all right? So those are the gills. Uh, and moving those to the side kind of begins to expose the crawfish body cavity. And if we peel back some of this connective tissue, we can see kind of another important structure for our purposes. Okay, and there it is sitting right on top. And it can be a little bit difficult uh, to uh, identify if you're just kind of going through and mashing your crawfish, but if you're delicate, you can get the heart exposed nicely. So think about it. The heart and the stomach are kind of switched relative to what you would expect to see in, you know, a human being, for example, or your dog or cat. All right, the stomach is at the front, and the heart is more down towards the um, towards the back. Whereas with a person, you would expect, you know, the heart to be up here somewhere, and the stomach to be around here somewhere. Well, it's the opposite with crawfish. All right, now remember, crawfish have an open circulatory system, uh, just like all arthropods, meaning. They don't have a series of vessels and veins. Instead, uh, this heart just kind of pumps and swishes that um, hemolymph, which is their blood equivalent, the crawfish blood equi equivalent, uh, through the body cavity, all right? And that blood swishes, or that hemolymph rather, swishes through these little holes, okay, located. There you see it just um, to the other side of, of my uh, pointer there. These little holes in the heart called ostea. All right, let's go ahead and remove the heart so we can have a better look at those ostea. Okay, there's our crawfish heart. And again, you have these holes. 
all right, kind of strategically located throughout the uh, crawfish heart. And it's these holes that are, um, you know, the pores through which that blood, or that, I'm sorry, that hemolymph uh, will be moving. Okay. All right, great. So we have our heart. Let's go ahead and move on to what is now perhaps uh, the most prominent organ inside of the crawfish body, this large yellowy, yellowish stuff, which is commonly referred to as the fat. And this does act in some kind of fat storage capacity, but really a better equivalent is a liver. Okay, and this is what we call the digestive gland. And this can be pretty hard to get out in one piece, so I'm going to have to take it out in, you know, sort of chunks. Okay, I'll try not to be too messy about it. But anyways, this um, very large prominent structure is, it runs throughout most of the uh, cephalothorax, takes up a lot of space, and again, it's called the, um, uh, the digestive gland. All right, it has these distinct lobes, and it's kind of mushy. I'm not even really going to bother to take out the rest of that. Okay, but you should be able to identify, um, you know, the digestive gland when you see it inside of the crawfish. Okay? So that satisfies uh, the internal anatomical features of the um, crawfish's cephalothorax. But there is some interesting musculature that you should be aware of inside of the tail, uh, which is how we will now conclude this dissection. Okay? So, uh, to get at the tail muscles, I'm going to make two parallel uh, cuts. All right, running right down uh, the crawfish's segments. And again, you always want to be careful to hug your scissors you know, just along uh, the inside of the exoskeleton, or else you're going to you know, mash up everything that's in there, and you don't want to do that. one side, we're going to do that same thing on the other. Okay, so once we have our two parallel cuts, we're going to cut across, and again, to connect them. And if we did this right, this should peel up nicely. Okay, and come on. And I did do it right. Look at that. Okay. So, here we have two different aspects of crawfish musculature that have been exposed. Okay. We have this, uh, here we have some more digestive gland. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way so that we can see. Uh, but before we get to the muscles, let's go ahead and point out uh, the intestine, okay? The intestine, um, you know, that, that's what it is, okay? After it's been digested in the stomach, it's going to move to the intestine where uh, nutrient absorption will, you know, resume, and then it's going to exit out the, uh, the anus at the end of the tail there, all right? But anyways, here we see these uh, two big prominent lobes, okay? This is what's called the flexor muscle. And this muscle is going to be responsible for curling the tail, all right? And that's the most powerful action that the crawfish uh, does, all right? It, it can really curl that tail very, very strongly, okay? So it has these, and that's because it has these big, strong flexor muscles to do that, all right? The um, antagonistic muscles to that, the muscles that do the opposite, uh, are attached to the upper side of the um, exoskeleton in the tail, and these are the much weaker, relatively speaking, uh, extensor muscles, okay? And the extensor muscles are responsible for straightening the tail, okay? Straightening the tail. So we have the extensor muscles on the top, and we have the flexor muscles on the bottom, all right? So that concludes um, the internal anatomy of the crawfish.